a high school graduate, didn't go to college, no job experience. Mm. Okay, we'll see. Emma Gonzalez? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Olive. Have a seat. It's a pleasure to meet you, Olive. Mm -hmm. And how are you doing today? I'm doing great, but I'm, I'm a little nervous, but I'm so glad for this opportunity. Fantastic. Now, I see from your resume that you graduated high school just last year. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what made you want to pursue a call center job instead of college? Well, I had always hoped to go to college, but I've also always known that it's just not an option for my family financially. So years before I graduated high school, I made preparations to work in this industry. I think call center is a solid workplace to work in. And I have been lucky enough to make it in the initial interview and here I am. I don't have a formal job experience, but I've been helping out in our family Sarisari store since I was a kid. I've picked up a thing or two about customer service and I'm positive that these skills will come in handy in, a, in an actual call center setting. Mm -hmm. And working in a Sarisari store, what are your tasks? What do you usually do? Uh, I, I do a bit of everything. I keep track of the inventory, making sure that what we have matches what we sell. I also keep the store tidy. I talk to customers to make sure that they get what they need. All these things, I believe, will help me do well in a call center setting. Mm -hmm. And the customers, are they mostly your neighbors or are there people you don't know? I would say 50-50, so 50% would be the customers that are our neighbors or people I already know, and 50% would be customers that I don't know, strangers, because we are pretty close to a busy area. Mm -hmm. And where is your store located? We're located near a bus terminal at Echoland. Are you aware that you're going to be handling customers from all around the world? They're mostly going to be Americans, but some of them could be from different backgrounds and ethnicities. What do you think of that? Yes, I'm aware of it. In fact, I've, before I graduated, I've been making preparations, making sure that I understand the description of the job. I've been watching videos about it online, and now I can pretty much say that I understand the basic scope of the job. Really? You've made preparations? What preparations? So I have been watching videos about call center online on YouTube and I've also been exposing myself to international movies because they help me understand their accent. It's okay. also helping me neutralize my accent so it's it's easier to understand. And through the movies I watch, I also learn about their culture and their customer service standards. Now, in your own words, can you briefly explain to me what a call center is? So for me, call center is a place where representatives or agents work on the phone. Either they answer phones to help customers with their inquiries and problems um, that could be out inbound where people or the customers are the ones calling the representatives or it could be outbound where the, the agents or the representatives are the, one, the ones calling the customers. It's either to sell or to conduct a survey. Okay. From what I understand about the position you're hiring for, you're looking for CSRs who could help customers with their inquiries, questions, and issues. Yes, you got that right. So what do you think then is the difference between handling customers in your Sarisari store and handling customers from all around the world, if there's any? Well, the most obvious one would be the language. In our in our Sarisari store, I just get to use vernacular language, so it's not really much of a challenge when it comes to language. But in a call in a, an international call center, of course, um, most of the time you're going to be speaking a language that is not your mother tongue. If you're in the Philippines, which in this case is English, as I understand. So, and also there's the the challenge of accents and another one is culture so i think those are the differences mm -hmm. and do you think that you can handle the challenge yes i am positive that i can any plans of going back to school soon 
not for the next three years. My plan for the next three years is to just gain real world experience and that's by getting a job, an actual job. And my plan is to, to make that happen in the call center industry. Okay. So what do you think then is your edge over the other applicants, specifically the college graduates? My edge over the other applicants, especially the college graduate ones, is my real world experience. Uh, it may be just it may just be a local experience, um, but I believe that what makes customers tick is a universal. Customers in general want to be taken care of, feel respected, and just overall feel that they're getting their money's worth. I understand this in a de deeper level through actual practice. Other applicants might have gone to college, which I think is a great advantage on its own, but I would, I think I could compensate for that by having lived the actual experience. So it seems to me that you've done a great deal of research. It means that you're truly interested in the job and I really appreciate that as your interviewer. Uh, but if you were to take on this job, what do you think would be your greatest weakness, if there is any? Well, I have heard that during the nesting process, there's a lot of information to take in to the point that uh, most agents have problems retaining information. And I believe that that would be my greatest weakness. I would definitely have challenges with that but I think I can mitigate that by understanding the relevance of each process and of course taking detailed notes and what works for me at school when I'm having problems retaining information is by putting that into practice if I can so in this case for example I could maybe practice mock calls with a co-trainee involving the processes that I'm confused of. That way I would have a better chance at retaining their information because I'm using that information in a mock call. In a call center workplace, teamwork is crucial. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. If there's no teamwork, you just cannot get the job done. Absolutely. So can you describe a situation where you had to work with others to achieve a common goal, whether that's in school or outside? Um, that would be during our school's nutrition month. Uh, our class joined a competition and the theme was about the different food groups. And, and because I have a knack for drawing things, uh, my classmates decided that I should draw our entry. The only problem was, is I'm not that good at conceptualizing ideas into art. I know how to draw, but I just, just didn't know how, what to draw. So what I did was to ask for suggestions from my classmates. We brainstormed and after a few hours, we came up with an entry that would win us the second prize and I couldn't have done it without the help of my classmates. I'm curious, what was the final ideal you came up with? Yeah, so they had me sketch a huge plate divided like a pie chart, and for each portion would be uh, the, the different food groups. So there would be fruits, veggies, proteins, grains, and around the plate there are kids from all over the world sharing a meal so that symbolizes global nutrition and on top there was a banner that says balance in every bite that won as the second prize and i couldn't have done it without the suggestions of my classmates without teamwork because that idea didn't just come from one head it came from all of my classmates that is really cool i agree teamwork is really important now how comfortable do you think you are when it comes to using computers and learning new software systems? I'm quite comfortable with computers. Um, in school, that's pretty much what we use for assignments and presentations now. 
Um, I am familiar with basic office applications, internet browsing, researching online. So I don't think I would have challenges understanding software systems. Now there would, when it, when it comes to new software applications, um, I know there would be learning curves, but I think I pretty much understand the basics, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you've been asked this before during your initial interview, but I will ask them again. Are you willing to work during night shifts, shifting schedules, and special holidays? Yes, I am. Perfect. Well, Emma, I must say that I really enjoyed learning more about you and how you fit into this role. Before I end this interview, do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, yes, I do. So if I'm selected for this position, if I'm lucky enough to be selected as one of your agents, um, how do you usually give feedback? Do you have a way of letting your, your, new, your trainees know whether they're doing well or whether there's still room for improvement? Um, how do you usually give feedback? Oh, definitely. We have regular check-ins. So in the beginning, it's all about helping you get the hang of things. So we will let you know what's working and what you can improve on. Overall, it's pretty laid back, but helpful. That's really great. Thank you so much for explaining that, Olive. No problem. Anything else on your mind? No, I think that's it. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for having me and for your time. Mm -hmm. It was great to meet you too, Emma. Uh, we will be making our decision before, what are we now, lunchtime today. So please keep your lines open because we will be delivering the result through a phone call. Thank you, Olive. I am looking forward to hearing from you. Perfect. Could you please call Michael Santos on your way out? Sure. Have a great day, Olive. You too. Have a great day. I guess I'm gonna have to decide now. Michael Santos? <laughs>